in today's video we're talking about sewing mindsets specifically beginner mindsets versus more intermediate advanced mindsets when I was a beginner sewer, my mindset was holding back my progress and I didn't even realise it. But looking back, it really was. So today I'm going to compare how my mindset was right at the start to where it is now in the hopes that it can help you too. Well, welcome back to the channel. My name's Claire. So today I thought we would deep dive into mindset, specifically my mindset. I thought I'd discuss with you how... I was in my mind thinking about sewing in the beginning and you might resonate with me and you might learn something because my mindset has changed significantly over the years. I've got seven points to discuss with you and they are going to be really quite eye-opening, I believe. So let's get into it. So I'll never forget when I first started sewing, I was not sewing clothes, I was sewing um, bags and pouches and things like that and there's a lot of straight sewing in that and I remember trying to sew a straight line and I couldn't do it, my seam was all over the show like this and I got so frustrated. The problem was I was looking at the needle, not the needle plate, which meant I, my eye was following the needle, so it was going wherever the needle was going. So that's not gonna help you. So if you're a beginner, don't do that. But I got so frustrated with the idea that I could not sew a straight line. And then I'd see all these people online who sewed these beautiful garments. I'd watch YouTube channels and you'd see their sewing and it was straight as a die. And I just thought, when am I ever gonna be able to do this? Am I ever gonna be able to sew a straight line? I don't think I will. I didn't have the skills or the experience to be able to do it. It seems like such a straightforward thing to know how to do. At one point, I was on the brink of giving up, thinking, I, can't, I can never sew clothes because I can't sew a straight line. And you know, in clothes, accuracy is important. And I just thought, oh, I can never do it. How wrong I was, how wrong I was. Of course I would learn to sew a straight line. If you are struggling to sew a straight line, then just believe that you will. That was my mindset when I started. My mindset now is that not only could I sew a straight line if I practice and gain some experience, but I can sew anything I want. All it takes is experience, practice, and developing the skill that you're trying to develop. I don't look at anything and think, oh, I can't do it because I haven't done it. I look at it as if I haven't done it yet, but I can and will do it. A good case in point where I actually didn't achieve what I thought I could achieve but I gave it a go anyway was the v-neck if you haven't seen that video do check it out where I completely messed up my v-neck and I wasn't expecting that I thought I would breeze through it because my mindset now is a lot better and I didn't but it was a learning experience and that's why I shared it with you guys so if you are frustrated that you cannot do something in sewing just know that with practice, experience, time and skill, you can do anything you want. When I started to sew clothes, I became frustrated very, very quickly. And that was because no pattern ever fitted me. Now, I didn't know how to draft my own patterns. I really thought that was way beyond my skill set. And actually, it was at the time. But all the patterns that I was looking at that I liked did not go up to my size. They maybe went up to a size 20 and I'm like a 22 to 26 and I became very frustrated. And that was at a period where I was refusing to even take my measurements because I couldn't accept my body, which was a whole other issue. It was not a nice experience finding patterns that I absolutely loved, felt really passionate to sew check the measurements and then check my own measurements, which were, it was really difficult to do, and then see that, no, the pattern thought I was too fat for that pattern. I can't sew that pattern. I think there was one company that I'd come across, which was Seamwork or Colette, 
um, that did do some patterns, but not all of their patterns, up to my size, which was a relief but it didn't leave me with much choice because it was just like one company. So I had a mindset then that I was gonna have to give up, but I was gonna look, maybe clothes were not for me. Initially, when this was a problem for me, I decided that I was gonna sew clothes, but not for me. And I didn't have anyone else that I could really sew clothes for. Well, I thought I didn't until they all come out of the woodwork asking me to make them stuff. I was just picking a random size, maybe a 10 or a 12, sewing that up and just thinking, yes, I made some clothes. And I had this whole rail of clothes that looked lovely, but they didn't fit me. Nowhere near did they fit me. And that really affected my self-esteem. Initially, I didn't think to grade patterns up or to learn how to grade. I just thought I couldn't do it. I would just have to sew clothes that were not my size and that would be the end of it. Well, no, 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 Claire of the past, that is not the end of it. My mindset now, well, my mindset is very different because we are in a different place. There are a lot more patterns available now. So we are in a different place, which significantly helps your mindset. If you're a pattern designer who's recently gone up into larger sizes, I commend you because it really does help people's mindset and their self-esteem as well when they look at a pattern and they see that they fit into it. But actually, let's look at my mindset now if I was in that situation. So if I was in that situation, I would look at the sizes before I even purchased the pattern. I never considered sizes when I was purchasing it before, but that's what I would do now. And if it didn't come in my size, then I would determine that that pattern was not for me and I would look for something else. And if I was restricted to one company, then I'm restricted to one company. Unless I wanted, if I really, really wanted that pattern, then I would learn to grade it up, which is what I did do later in my process. I found learning to grade patterns up was really, really beneficial and it opened up any pattern to me so if you really want to do that and the pattern that you're looking at doesn't fit you then you can make it fit you you can learn those skills but also if i was looking at it now i would look at the patterns that do fit into my size range and i would look at their basic patterns and see how i could adapt it to look like the other patterns that i liked that didn't fit into my size range i would just understand that I have choices and that is something I didn't really understand or believe when I was starting out. So the next point is I was disappointed when I realised that the garment I had made that I had spent hours upon hours, sometimes days, working on just didn't fit right. I might have done the right size, I might have graded between sizes, Sometimes I wouldn't do any of that and I'd just pick a size closest to my size, make it up and hope for the best. I was just trying to find every shortcut I could because I didn't want to put the extra work into making a pattern be perfect for moi. If you go back to the beginning of my channel, you will see lots of makes that were so ill-fitting because I didn't take the time to a, understand how to adapt that fit, B, understand construction and the body, and creating a 3D garment with a 2D piece of fabric. I could have been easier on myself, I really could. I could have been nicer to myself with this because I would talk down to myself that I just, I haven't got these skills. I would just live with the garment rather than trying to fix it and actually now my mindset now is that do not make a garment without a twirl i really didn't understand the benefit of a twirl well i understood the benefit of a twirl but i just didn't want to do a twirl i will be producing a video where i am just talking about twirl so do look out for that if you camp no twirl still at the moment often me going on and on and on about it for so long if you are still one of those no 12 people you will benefit from the video that i'm going to do 
about 12. My mindset now is I don't ever do a garment without a 12. It has changed my sewing experience significantly. More than that, my mindset now is that I just understand that there are things I can do. I just need to take the time to learn how to make those adjustments and I can have really well fitting clothes as you've seen in my recent makes. So my next mindset mistake was that I thought that I needed the most snazzy, most expensive, most beautiful sewing machine out there in order to sew better. I remember when I was sewing with this sewing machine, which was the second ever sewing machine that I bought, which was, I think I paid £250 for it, and it wasn't a great machine. And I felt that if I had a better machine, that I would then be able to sew better. But of course, it does not work like that. So after that machine, I'd only had that machine about 10 months or so, I then upgraded to this machine, which cost me £500 and had 100 stitches on it. I mean, who can't sew a couture garment if they haven't got 100 stitches? Let's face it, we can all do that, can't we? I knew in my mind back then that having 100 stitches wasn't going to help me be a better sewer. I convinced myself that it would. Not that I needed those extra stitches, but a more high-end machine would do a better job and I would be better at sewing. What a silly mindset that is. I'm sure some of you have been there as well and you now realise that that is not the way forward. Um, but I guess we just always want what we haven't got and I was very, very guilty of that. To be fair, I started out with an Ikea sewing machine that cost £45, so I did need to upgrade from that. You know, I had many machines that I probably didn't need to upgrade from. And that machine I showed you before, the Janome DKS100, that is now my backup machine. I still have that, but I have my super snazzy sewing machine um, that you've seen in many of my videos, and I, I do love it. Gives me a real good sewing experience. It's the difference between driving a $100 second-hand car that goes clunk, clunk, clunk and driving a Mercedes-Benz and having a much better driving experience. It's kind of similar to that, not so extreme. Yes, having a nice machine does make for a better sewing experience. It does. There is no getting around that. It does but it doesn't make me a better sewer. And actually now I understand that. And that's because of my lived experience because I've gone through having new machines, more snazzy machines, more expensive machines. You don't need a sewing machine that is high end to be able to sew high end garments. You just need to develop your skills. You need to practice, get, gain experience, and you need to just take it slowly and understand that over time you will become a better sewer just because you're doing it lots and lots and lots that is down to you down to developing your skills not the tools that you use tools can help make it easier but they won't on their own make you a better sewer if you're enjoying this video i'd just like to take a break here to ask you to hit that subscribe button and down there leave me a comment and give me a like YouTube absolutely loves those things and so do I. So let's get into the next point. So the next mindset faux pas I did when I was first sewing and I'm pretty sure some of you are doing this is that I would see a fabric that I absolutely loved. I would fall in love with it and buy it there and then, I'd have to have it, and then I'd get it, and it'd be every bit as beautiful as I thought it would be if I was buying online. I was too scared to use it. I kept thinking, oh, I'll save it for later. I'll have a project in mind, and I'll think, oh, I don't want to use that. That fabric's too nice to use on this project. Or maybe I'll use that fabric once I've lost weight, or I don't want to use that fabric for that project, because I'm going to make a beautiful dress in two months' time, and I'm going to need it for that. So I would look at these fabrics and they'd just sit there and I'd, I'd be putting off these projects, not putting them off forever. In my mind, I was going to do them, but I just kept putting them back, putting them back. But in reality, I just did not want to break into that fabric that I absolutely love. 
I was thinking it cost me X amount to purchase this and if I ruin it, like if I make a garment that doesn't fit me properly like they never used to, like we spoke about before, then it's going to be such a waste of fabric. So that was very much my mindset back then in that I would just never ever want to break into that fabric. So what a silly mindset that was of me to have was to just buy these gorgeous fabrics that sometimes cost a pretty penny and they just sat there and never got used. What is the point of just admiring fabric every day? I'd buy beautiful fabrics and they were just decor, basically decor. So my mindset now is quite a bit different to that. I did a de-stash at the end of last year, you might have seen on my channel and got rid of lots of fabric and I've bagged up lots of other fabrics that I won't ever use. That's the other thing is that when you don't use these fabrics over time your taste change and then they end up being no good to you. But in this case, I'll be giving a load of fabrics to charity, so it's not all a bad thing. So I used to buy fabrics all the time, which would you'll sort of get the gist of in my next point, but I did buy them all the time and now I don't. But once a year, I will do a purchase where I'll go and buy about 10 pieces of fabric fabric that I have thought out and planned for that I know I'm going to sew up and then I will sew that up over the year and then when it runs low or in a year's time or whatever I will then purchase more when I need it. So the next one is quite funny if it's a mindset that you don't have but it might be quite funny if it's a mindset you do have as well and that is it's quite serious as well in some ways if you think about it it is believing that I need to buy all the sewing supplies there are, every tool, every contraction, you name it, I had to have it, whether it was a sewing machine, fabric, notions, thread, ribbons, you name it. I've got stuff that I bought seven, eight years ago that I have never used, but I really believed in needing to build a stash up in order that I never ever run out of supplies. I'm gonna go a little bit easy on myself with this one because my situation was that I was in full-time work, I was on a good wage, and I knew because I have chronic illness, at some point I was gonna to have to give up work and money would be drastically reduced. So my mindset was while I'm working, I'm gonna spend my money on things that I will need at some point, once I've stopped working, I'll have no reason not to sew, because at that time, I was so obsessed with sewing. If you've recently discovered garment sewing, you will know what I'm talking about. I was in full-time work, I just dream about getting home and being able to sew, although I was often too knackered to be able to sew when I got home, but I just dreamed of being able to sew full-time. It was my passion. And so I didn't ever want to be in a position where I was out of supplies and I had no money to buy any. Talk about a self-fulfilling prophecy, really? The thing is, if I had not bought those sewing supplies and I'd put the money in a bank account where I could access if I needed sewing supplies, then I'd have been in a much better position because I'd have a backup fund at backup funds give you options. Um, I've never been good with money, as you might be able to tell from this point. I now look at it and think, what was you doing? What was you doing? You could have been saving the money and then just buy what supplies you need and you'd have had lots of money left over. But hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? It really is. 2020 vision, which is more than I've got without my glasses on, let me tell you. If you can relate to any of this, do leave me a comment down below and let me know. I would love to hear your stories. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and purchase a coffee for me if you really enjoyed this video, because they really do help. Until next time, happy sewing. Bye for now. We might need to give that some pizzazz.
so you know because we've got all these curves my next mindset mistake if you want to call it that all oh, mindset mistakes that's a good one isn't it let me write that down for a title 